So here we go. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome and again, if you guys want to see me, you're welcome to sit there, but if you're good just relaxing, that's good. Um, so I am so excited about today because, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure who here has read the Brian Weiss books. Um, Brian Weiss is like the king of past life regression. Uh, so I totally recommend reading any of her, his books. They're all like equally good as a standalone or part of the series. Uh, there's also um, Michael, shoot, what's his name, who wrote Journey of Souls, Michael Newton. Um, his second book, River of Souls, it's um, not as much like, it's more technical, like here's the structure of how we do everything in the hierarchy and, uh, and if you're this kind of soul or that kind of soul. But the first book, Journey of Souls, is a really, he uh, regresses people to life between lives. So to your like higher self. Um, now, and then um, the third book I recommend is uh, Billy Fingers mm -hmm. by Annie Kagan, K-A-G-A-N, um, The Afterlife of Billy Fingers. And in that book, Annie's brother dies and then his soul comes <coughs> back and works, teaches her a lot of stuff and they write the book together beautiful book and the reason I mentioned these three uh, venue literary venues is uh, Brian Weiss was a psychotherapist and his interest was in helping people release trauma of the past so they could embrace the present and go forward to their future so all of the past life regression he does is kind of with that in concept what trauma are you carrying forward from past lives um, Dr. Newton is brilliant, brilliant. I mean, th these are all brilliant people and I love, I've read all their books multiple times, but he's a very structured person. He wants to know how everything fits together. And sometimes he puts structure where it doesn't need to exist or he'll like say, well, it's obviously this because it all fits together. And they're like, uh, you're missing all this other stuff. So when you read his books, you'll feel in your heart, like it's so funny because you're reading and it's new information, but your heart is saying, yes, yes, this is truth, this is real. And then you'll hit one bit, bit where your heart will say, eh, he didn't quite get that right. And when I first read Journey of Souls, uh, as I was reading it, I spoke to people who had read it before and I said, about the part where they're like, and they're all like, yeah, he didn't get that part right. It's, it's like your heart will tell you where he's like bullseye and where he's like eh, a little off uh but it's still like brilliant and an amazing experience and it really opens your eyes in a way that when you connect with past lives and higher self it gives you a platform of knowledge but then if you read brian weiss and michael newton you're like there are areas where they they're in conflict with each other like is it this or is it this Along comes Billy Fingers, and he's just like, he's like living the experience and sharing it as he's doing it, and he kind of shows how they're both right from slightly different vantages, and he like ties it all together. So if you are really interested in getting to know yourself on all life levels, these books are very helpful. Hi, come on, it's okay, we're just doing the preamble and stuff. Thank you. If you're welcome, sit down and we'll do the spreading out and stuff in a bit. Okay. Yes. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I recommend those books. You just missed some book recommendations and okay. you can catch them on YouTube uh, when I upload this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, the lovely thing about past life regression is the more you do it, the more you can connect with all of your lives or as many as you want to. Um, when I was born in this life, I was born with total memory of my whole existence. So I remember from when I was a spark in the cone of inception and all the adventures I had before I started incarnating as a human. And then I remember like all of my lives. 
but I thought that was like normal. I thought that's how everyone was. It wasn't until I was like middle aged that I learned that other people were not similarly connected. I remember like I talked to someone about like something that happened a few years ago and they're like, oh, I don't remember that. And I'm like, but that's only a few years ago. Like, like that's like saying I don't remember, like what do you have like Alzheimer's or something? Like that's only this life. <laughs> Um, now, having said that, it doesn't mean that I was in constant contact with all of my lives. You know, it's it just like when you go through this life, you don't 100% Hi, come on in. No, that's okay. We're just doing the prologue. Um, so it doesn't mean I went through my whole life with all my lives around. But it does mean I always felt a little bit like multiple personality schizophrenic <coughs> because a lot of my lives had it. Feel free to sit anywhere. We're going to spread out later. Yes. Um, <coughs> you know, I often felt a little schizophrenic, multiple personality because like my past lives would be vocal about things. And um, it took a lot of work to learn to deal with that and to learn to uh, be my own person in this life, who I am. Um, and you will find when you go through your regressions, uh, some of the issues that you're dealing with this life may not be your issues. They might be issues from your past lives. Um, for example, um, I have this very devout holy man from a few hundred years ago who chose to spend his life living in solitude on a mountaintop in like a little cabin that he built himself, reading the Bible and being one with nature. Um, and he was like, like just an extraordinary man, but, and he really helped me when I was growing up with my schoolwork, he helped me with my studies but my social skills, like, especially when I got to high school, I was like, I didn't know how to socialize with other people. And finally, I sat down, I, I met with him in a sacred space where we sat around a sacred fire. And I said to him, here's where I want your help, but here's where you have to release your connection to me. And he said, but I don't understand what is better than being one in nature. And I will tell you, I grew up in the woods. I went for walks in nature, like, every day but uh i was like because i'm a 15 year old girl i want to have you know a click i want to have a boyfriend and he was like ah! <laughs> i said yeah you need to disconnect that <laughs> and after that i got a great social group before then i was like kind of brutally rejected by social groups in the way that only middle school and high school kids can be but as soon as he disconnected literally immediately people started including me in, you know, like inviting me on activities. So um, you may find that some of your issues are just, he thought he was helping me, but he was not helping me. Now there are sometimes what I, I had another life that was a very, it was a like four, 5,000, 6,000 years ago. And it was a, a very nice man who had been horribly abused his whole life and then died in a very tragic way. But he was a brilliant, loving man who had received rejection. After he died, he never reconnected to our soul. He remained here because all he had ever known was rejection. He didn't know to return to the loving space. So all of the lives from him to me now have had a little bit of a haunting of this rejection, which means all of us have felt a little bit of a, who's going to hit me, who's going to reject me. Now, some lives are like, ah, who cares? I'm a pirate. And other lives have been overwhelmed by it. And other lives are like, oh, I've been loving and healing. You know, it, it's not like, you know, it, it's just an aspect of self that may or may not be acknowledged or, you know, or maybe like push aside, like, oh, who wants that loser around? But um, in this life, because part of my work for this life is to clear all past life karma. So that includes any lives that have not 
reconnected. Sometimes when I do a past life, Ariel, do we have tissues? When I do a past life read, and you guys, if you find yourself crying, cry. This is when we know we're resonating with truth and we're like releasing we're being one. So I expect the tissue box to be passed all around today. All right. You'll, that's okay. You'll find me crying at certain points too. Um, so um, sometimes I work with someone and I'm doing a past life reading and I'll see someone hiding in the shadows. And I'll say, you have someone who needs help. Do you feel in this life you wish to help a past life? Or do you feel in this life you really want to work on what you're working on and we'll just send that past life love? And the, usually they're like, no, send it forward. I remember one time this woman came from the shadows. She was, uh, she was covered. You know, she was wearing a burqa and she was covered. And, um, and all you could see was her hands peeking out like this. And all you could hear was her saying so quietly, please, please. It was like, I mean, oh. this woman had been so abused her whole life. All she knew was to hide in the shadows. And um, we finally were able to get her to speak up and give her name and tell her story and how she just wanted to enjoy life from a place of acceptance. So um, she expressed what she needed from my client in order to be able to feel fulfilled enough that then she could go and return. And my client came back to me sometime later and said, how is uh, Besa? Besa was the, Beso? Besa was the name of, of the, uh, the woman, you know, and said, uh, we have gone hiking together, we've gone dancing together. She is having so much fun, and now she told me she is ready to return to self. And this was like, I don't know, like six months later, something like that. And um, she said, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we did that, and now this life that she helped to is now one of her guides. And so... We, we can work with, like, healing trauma from past lives can be very empowering for all aspects of self. So I say this, if you find, um, and we will do this towards the end, we will go and look for a past life that needs a little support. For my life, who had been traumatized, I sat with him in a sacred fire, and I told him about all the amazing lives that he has been from him to me. I said to him, you are valued, you are appreciated. And, and then we started calling forward lives between us who all say, you're, you know, you're our, our big brother. You know, you are part of us, you're one with us. And look at all of the goodness that came from your, you know, connection of energy. And that made him feel so empowered. And it was the funniest thing. He um, had never been given a name in his life. Like I said, he had been disrespected from the first moment of breath to the last moment. And, um, and so, you know, and I said to him, what would you like? And he said, I would like a name. And I said, well, what name would you like? And he said, I want the name Dudley. And I was like, you're an ancient Greek guy. Like, and, and he was very misshapen. He was like, you know, he was very like elephant man looking fellow. And I said, well, what, why? Uh, but not with the, the elephant thing, but, you know, Quasimodo kind of look. And I said, why the name Dudley? And he said, well, from Dudley do right. He always saves the day. He's very handsome. He has a uniform. He rides a horse and he always saves Penelope. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> So his name is Dudley, and he's like thrilled with this name. Um, so uh, we went back, and we could we he chose not to change his life in any way, but all of the lives that had come forward to help him, all of us sent love to his life. So the pain of his life was able to receive love, and it really helped lift him to become in the presence with us. So. Um, uh, so I'm just mentioning, you know, like time is not as linear as we think it is. 
it, it's not even remotely linear. <laughs> okay. Um, before I move on, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yeah. I have fun. found <laughs> several levels of lives, past lives. Um, so let's start with like, how are we able to be our past lives and our present life? Um, and in some cases, one life is born while another life is still alive. In fact, the older your soul gets, the more common that is. At this moment, there is a delightful young man who's a very good friend of mine, and we are of the same body. Um, and so, because, you know, when you're first learning a craft, you have to really focus on every detail. But the more uh, acclimated you become, the more you start multitasking, right? So, um, when you do past life regressions, understand sometimes you'll hit multiple lives that existed at the same time. Don't worry about it. Um, when we are with our higher self, we're like basically a collective of ourselves. There is your soul, you know, your higher self. Uh, there are all of your past lives that exist complete on their own, but also part of the higher self. There's the energy waiting to become future lives. Uh, we don't always incarnate on linear timeline because linear timeline exists here but as the frequency goes up that's going to be out the window Ariel and I were talking about that the other day yes did you have a series of really intense uh, dreams I only have really intense <laughs> dreams <laughs> are they all lessons you go to different dimensions I usually go to different dimensions yes and we're going to be doing that in the afternoon yeah those are all my dreams there you go Sorry. yeah okay. yes so, not a young soul. No. <laughs> last year, reincarnated. Yeah, well, um, remind me before we uh, finish up to talk about future Earth, because there's a lot of people say, oh, this is my last life, I know it, but... Um, yeah, I turn over to ladies. Yeah, but there's going to be a new way of reincarnating in the future that a lot of last life people are going to be coming in in a new way. Fun. So much more fun. Oh, like 20D. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Um, do you find that I get snippets of like my life? I mm -hmm. go through cycles, and I always find, and there's different themes, and I see them popping into my head, and their personalities change on a daily basis. I, they used to. I'm trying to control it more. I mean, like yeah. one person for one minute, and then I feel like another person. Oh my God! Yeah, I hate I, that. <laughs> yeah. It's horrific. Um, I don't remember names. I can't remember specifics. Um, right. I do always remember certain pains in my body. Deaths seem to kind of be the same all the time. Do you find that? Have you encountered people that have that versus always seeing your? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, I get that. I get that, and um, so you have a natural ability, but you do not yet have the training. As you get the training, things will be a lot easier. And my dreams are like hers, and they come in threes. I always have three a night, and they're like long with me. Yeah. Yeah. My they're guardian angels long. come in. Your future self, your past self, your parents, like past lives, your parents' future lives. Yeah. Like, you can. Well, you not, can not just in reincarnation, yeah. but in, in but messages. Right. I'll see my guardians your past come in. Life okay. So, guys, I don't want to get in that now because we're going to be dealing with that this afternoon. But does it have to do with reincarnation? Because um, it's, yeah, um, Give me a moment and we'll get to that because okay. that's like you just opened a huge, okay. you know. Yeah, but um, also, if you go on my YouTube channel and you type in uh, past life or Akashic records, um, you'll get a ton of videos. A couple of years ago, I did a two month program on past life regression and going to the Akashic library. 
So you'll find a wealth of tools in there. And also read the books I told you about because you guys are naturally there. You just have not received the training that you need to like do what you need to do with it. And I'll tell you, there it's like so awful when you have past lives that keep popping up and saying things and messing with your personality. It is just so annoying. I have this one past life who for her time, she was like really high minded. But for our time, she's a freaking racist. And like, I am not a racist. I mean, I was raised by people who organized protest marches in DC, like Pete Seeger and the Clearwater Gang stayed at our house when they were in town. And then I have this woman going, oh, that person's doing so well for an obviously low IQ. And I'm like, why would you say that? And she's Where did like, that thought come from? Yeah, yeah. And I'd like, and I would, I would put a, why would you say that in my head, whoever did that, who is definitely not me. And she said, well, because they're impoverished. If they were clever, they would not be impoverished. I'm like, who are you? And why are you saying this in my brain? Like, you need some rampant re-education now. But it is terrible when things like that pop in and they want to come out your mouth. And you're like, oh, no, no, I will not have the world think that this is me when it's old me, not new me. Like, yes, it is really so it just... Is somebody else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you, but it's an old you, well, not a new you. Okay, that makes me feel better. Yeah. 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 That happens with me. Like, I'm mm -hmm. also Pride. I love going to Pride events and everything, and I even, I associate with that community as well because I'm from Deadpool. But, like, for some reason, a past life was like, gay guys, I don't know. But then, like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm attracted to guys who are fluent with their sexuality as well, so right. I don't care. But then there's something in me, I'm like, why? Why are you thinking that? So, yeah, so one of the, as we go through today, you'll learn techniques to start working with them of saying, who are you and why are you in my head? Um, because if it's not you, then you don't need to claim it as self. Yeah. Here's one thing to remember. You are who you are from your core going outward. Your heart and your sacral chakra are always the two best places to stop and say, is this me? When your heart and your sacral chakra are in alignment, if the head is going in another direction, say to the head, get into alignment, you know, because the heart and sacral will always steer you right when they are in alignment. Okay, not always, but mostly, way more than the head, I'll tell you that. So, um, you are yourself emanating outward. Anything that comes from outward and hooks in, including past lives and guards, guides and guardians, they are not you. They're just giving you information. But when you are in alignment here and here, whatever comes in, you can filter it through your heart, filter it through your sacral and say, does this feel like me? I mean... I have been known to have a tantrum or two on my own, especially when I hang out with my siblings, but, and that is me going outward, <laughs> but, um, but the weird random thoughts that pop in, know that someone's there trying to like talk with you and this is how they're able to get in. They're like working really hard and they found a little chink to send something through and this is what came through. So you can follow that energy back to them and say, who are you? Let's get to know each other. It takes some practice, but eventually, like, everyone can do this. It just give yourself time and practice. Okay, so um, before we come to life, um, all right, as I was saying, all of our past lives, they don't disappear they return to like the collective of your soul. Each of them can continue their studies on their own individually. They can go off, you know what, I'm gonna hang out with angels for a while and then return. They are like, none of us will disappear when we die. We remain whom we are. Um, but if you have any karmic lessons to learn, it's a lot easier to learn them while you're in life than out of life. You know, for example, if you're trying to understand uh, compassion, 
and you're doing it while in body. That's a lot easier than after you die and you're like, uh, angels, can you teach me compassion? They're like, oh, just resonate with us. That's all you need. And you're like, yeah, that's a frequency, not a lesson. So um, a lot easier to learn while you're in life. Um, but our souls can communicate individually with each other or they can be part of the collective, the one mind, hive mind of the, the, to of the total. So um, before we decide to come to life, we ask ourselves, why are we coming to life? And how much is for self and how much is for service? And again, if it's like your first few lives, it's going to be 100% for self because that's all you can handle. And it's going to be probably fairly superficial. You know, I spent 10,000 years as a warrior, pretty much. And in order to karmically balance it, once in a while I would spend a life as a peasant who would get destroyed by warriors, you know. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I was very basic. Now, I was not a young soul because I had already been around for a very long time before I decided to incarnate as a human. But once I decided to incarnate as a human, I was a young soul for human <coughs> interactions. Um, so as you get along further, you start saying, well, I'm here for self, but I want to do service for this person that I want to help or service for this small local community. Uh, those of you who are in this room now, I can tell you, all of you have been around a long time or you would not be here, okay? So honor yourself immediately and forever going forward as an eternal being of divine love, beautiful light, who is incarnating as one life and you are here to help heal the planet. If you weren't, you would not be here now. I promise you that. So everyone you look to as your role model for like divine planetary healing, think of yourself as connected with them and one of their peers. Think of the Dalai Lama as a peer because he will get more help from you if you are connecting with him and saying, I deserve this, let me be one with you, than if you're like hiding going, oh, who am I to think I'm anything? I'm, oh, I'm just a schlub. That's not helping anyone. Embrace yourself and anything that's holding you back from it, say, oh, what lesson do I need to learn so I can release this <coughs> so that I can hurry to my divine calling of being one with all the splendor of raising the planet's frequency. All right? You guys good with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in this room who says, oh, yeah, everyone else in the room can do this but not me? <laughs> that's okay because all you have to do is go forward with faith and it will happen yes I have closed myself off completely mm -hmm. for so many years and I've suffered either from depression or from a lot of things and eventually even physical pain and damage to myself yeah I'll bet and when I finally opened myself up and accepted the light was that accepted, you know, God, whatever, you know, your faith is, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. I couldn't cut it off if I wanted to. Yeah. It just came, I mean, like if I was being thrown over Niagara Falls or it was pouring on me. Mm hmm So, believe me, it's, it's not that you haven't seen it, it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I... Yeah, the more you open up, the more you're like, oh, why have I been doing my umbrella when there's all this divine love light wanting to pour down on me? Just understanding it later. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is after we die, we'll understand. So <laughs> we don't need to worry so much. Like, you do not need to understand to accept. When you accept, the understanding comes along. Yes. No, that's just one way. Um, I don't know. I, I, like, like it's, I feel like it's like a lot of people find it that way. Or well, like the near-death experiences. Yeah, it's a lot of people are not getting the training we're supposed to have when we're young. So it takes 
trauma. Also, a lot of people, like if you're an empath and a telepath, oh. and you're going through the traumas of life where people are lying and they're being mean, you're going to shut down, right? Yes, or you're just going to constantly be like, why, why, why? You know, it's going to be very traumatic. And if you're like glowing with this beautiful light and you're surrounded by people who do not want glowing light around them, it makes them feel like um, like the gremlins. Ah, bright light, ah. <laughs> They're going to want to beat you down because they do not want to face what your light shines upon them that they see in themselves. So trauma happens. Okay, um, and we're getting a little off subject. Like, we could do a whole week on this, I'm sure. But um, if you are on your life path and you're going forward, understand the quicker you learn your lesson and release everything that's weighty, you know, and painful and unnecessary, the quicker you can go on to the next lesson. When you deny your abilities and you deny the extraordinariness in you and you stay where you are, you're going to get more and more trauma until you get pushed out. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, I was just a regular person and life was terrible and then I had a traumatic incident and the energy it took for me to get through that opened up all my psychic abilities. That is one way. But if that same person had received support and training when they were younger, they would not have needed to deal with all the trauma. However, having dealt with the trauma and gotten through, they're in a very good place then to put out their hand, become a teacher, a mentor to others who are in trauma to help them get through. Mm -hmm. So did they contract, this is what my life will be like? Maybe yes, maybe no. You know, it, it depends on the person. But certainly everything that happens in life gives us lessons and gives us energy. It's our choice what to do with it. All right. Now, um, so I would say, so before you come to life, you think, why am I going to life? Do I have any particular lesson I need to learn? Am I working on compassion? Or do I want to develop a technical skill? Uh, do I want to be a craftsperson and create beautiful, you know, functional, artistic, you know, wagons or something, or, you know, uh, crystal skulls? Like, there's going to be a reason you come to life. Um, or it might be, I've had a lot of hard lives, like I led a revolution, I was, you know, this and that. This next life, I want to lie in a hammock and eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have this one guy I did a past life reading to and I was cracking up I said even when you give yourself that life you end up the revolutionary and I, you know in, for him um, like every single life he was a leader and a fighter like I'd never met this man before I knew nothing about him and I was like in every single life like I, I see multiple lives where you're like, okay, I'm going to be the son of a wealthy man and all I have to do is play tennis and drink cocktails. And, and in those lives, you end up leading the people, starting the revolution against your father so that you can be there for the people that he's been oppressing in order to have all of the wealth and power. Like It is impossible for you to not be there for the common man and for the people and to like lead revolutions and he cracked up and his wife said do you know what he does in this life and i said what and she said he teaches meditation martial arts and um survival techniques to people in the military <laughs> it's called destiny <laughs> yeah it was so funny <laughs> it was a very high-ranking military official who um eventually learn just doing war is not enough. You need to do healing and you need to like be there for the people 100%. So, uh, so anyway, um, so you choose your purpose for coming to life for self, things you want to work on and grow within yourself so that your collective of self becomes more resplendent and fully formed and for service. Are you here to help individuals? Are you here to raise the frequency of the planet? you know, whatnot? Are you here to help like with some 
animal mandalas or you know what what is it that you're here to to help um and then you set up soul contracts your life path the first contract is generally to your mother because they give birth to you um even if you're then put up for an orphan or whatever that's usually the first soul contract mm -hmm. so you plan your life you make all of your soul contracts. Someone will say, oh, you're going to be at Crystal Cognizance on, <laughs> in August or June 9th, 2019. I want to be there too. Let's meet up and then we're going to do some work together. Like we set up all these little contracts and then um, we go into life and nothing goes as planned. Perhaps your mother was supposed to nurture you to be a divine healer but your mother's parents were abusive or maybe your mother's father died in a horrible accident and then your mother ended up becoming a drug addict and like so then instead of getting like nothing goes as planned you're supposed to meet someone in high school who will be your soulmate to work your life together but that person's parents transferred to another part of the country and you never meet them like nothing goes as planned we set up backup plans and safety nets that may or may not work. Sometimes you feel like you're doing what you're meant to do, but you feel like you should have had a partner to do it with, and yet you have to do it alone. And, you know, like nothing goes as planned. The goal is, no matter what's happening in life, to find your way back to full joy and love within your core being, to learn from everything and go forward no matter what. So, uh, you know, your life path might be like this. And as I was saying yesterday, imagine, you know, like when family circus, when the mother's like, Billy, come in for dinner. And he's in the backyard and he's like, mm -hmm. that's the way the life path is in reality. You plan it like this. It's like you go over here and there and eventually go up here and then you like backslide back down to here, like shoots and ladders. Mm -hmm. uh, but so long as we always find our way back to gracious self-love and learning and releasing everything below that frequency, you will always find your way forward. So what past lives connect with us? The ones that come forward first are the ones who feel like they can help you while you're in life. So they're like your, your guardians, your spirit guides. Or the ones who feel like by joining with you, they can complete their karmic lessons. Someone is like, I was an absolute jerk in my life and you're working on compassion. So I want to tag along. I'm going to bring you some of the power of me because I always push my way through. That will help you. And in exchange, I'm going to, you know, work, you know, absorb your compassion lessons so that way I can finish my karmic balance and, you know, be done with what I need to do. Yeah, they're, they're here to help. They watch over you. They advise you. Uh, as you know, not always the best advice because sometimes they're like bigoted or whatnot. Um, hi, come on in. Yay! <laughs> um, so... Um, so they're here to help. Yes? Can I just, um, I was, I'm writing too much and I got a little bit busy. So, okay, so you're, you're saying that our guides can work with us if they have... Your past lives past will lives. come along to guide you okay, they're, they're if they feel them. like the life you're okay. living is resonant with, what, one moment, with what they can support okay. or benefit by. Okay. Okay, so you have lives that believe they can help you or believe you can help them. You also have lives that never reconnected. They're like ghosts wandering the plains and they're just there. Everyone's got them. So if you find them, you know, animal just spirit. like, hmm? Is it animal spirits or tree spirits? Well, we're talking about your past lives. Okay. So we're gonna get to that in a second. Okay. Now, we don't always necessarily incarnate as humans. You may incarnate as an animal or an element or with Palladians for a while or the angelic realm. There are some people, like Tiffany, you've spent lives with non-humans, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Same here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, 
So suppose you are going through a life where you want to increase the frequency of the planet. Or so you can like set the Um and you're like, well, I spent a long time hanging out in the angelic realm with different pockets, elements of angels. So I feel pretty comfortable of bringing the life that's spent with angels here to help me with what I'm doing. So I'll have a little of that angelic resonance. Um, so it's not always as a human. Now there's another category of lives that hang out and this can be, um, and after we, uh, after we do a break, we're all going to spread out for the meditation part. So for now, we're just sitting. And these are, I call them like the peanut gallery lives. They're the lives that are a little bored, and they just want to watch and see what's happening. And they're like, I don't know, like eating popcorn and laughing at you. <laughs> you know, they're the ones, like they can be a little bit like the mean girls or a little bit like, like they think of you as a Laurel and Hardy movie or something. They're just having fun. They're in it for like the virtual experience. So when you, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, that's so beautiful. And ha ha, she fell on her face. And ooh, what's going to happen next? Like they're enjoying it like they're in the movie theater. Okay. So they're not helping. They're not hindering. But they provide energy that you can tap into and you can ask them for help. Mm. Yes. Yes. So, um, yes. Um, I was going to say, there's just like one random spirit that every time I go to like a, an event like this, his, like he just shows and right. I don't know who he is and, his, and he's like, my name is Dave, or he was like, my name is Dave, and I was like, I don't even like that name. <laughs> well, like, no, it's, it's my name. I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so one of the past life regressions asked to meet Dave and see what he's about. Okay. If, uh. Like, well, we have a lot of guides and guardians and animal spirit guides and our guardian angels and all of that. Um, and when we go in the Akashic Library this afternoon, it'll be easier to meet those guides and guardians. Um, when we're doing the past life regressions, I guarantee everyone here has past lives that have been like rubbing their hands together going, oh goody, I finally get to one-on-one -on -one with my human. So, um, you know, if Dave is speaking up now, He's probably a past life. Yeah. He likes the spotlight. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, get me on camera, get me on camera. <laughs> so, and I can tell you, the air is thick with past lives right now. Like, I'm looking around, it's almost like there is a beautiful cloud that we're sitting in. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to pause this and restart the next video. Right.